So before we get started, I would like to talk about the fundamentals of the channel, where things are going, how things are actually structured from now on. So far, all this time, I've been talking about the fundamentals of animation, how to actually be a better animator, um, some of the stuff that you actually can do to actually kind of have a nice foundation as an animator to get into the industry and win. So going forward, I'm still gonna be talking about the same things, but I'm gonna talk about animation, a little bit more about um, the games industry and games and animation for games. Because I think that's what most people come here for, is to actually kind of see me talk about games because I have so much experience in games. And I think it is time to actually give love to games because it is my passion after all, the thing that I love the most. And um, I'm going to give you like the lowdown about some of the stuff that happens behind the scenes in the games industry. I still feel like it's a little bit of a taboo, unfortunately. So hopefully we can actually sort that out here in this channel going forward. So this is the perfect episode to actually get started with this new foundation of animation for games because we're talking about game engines. So let's get started and let's talk a little bit about my past with game engines, where I come from, and what kind of things that I had to learn along the way. So let me give you guys a little breakdown from the very beginning about me, my career, and engines. Um, before I actually got started in the games industry, I know I knew nothing about engines whatsoever. I didn't know what they were for and what they were made. I just knew about games and I knew that I wanted to get into games. So as soon as I actually got started working um, into animation and all that good stuff, you start realizing that there is an engine and the engine helps you to put things in game. But even as you get started, you don't really get what an engine does. You just know that you can export your animations, put them in game, and then they show up and then you can see them playing. And especially on the first company that I started, I basically um, had all their animators just doing animation. And then you would give that animation to someone else. That someone else, a technical animator, will then put that animation in game did some magic, pressed some buttons, as far as we knew, and made the animation play in game. And that was magic. So you were, I was at least, very much um, excited to see my animations in game after the technical animator would actually touch it up and put it in engine. Fortunately, the, the job that I had after that was much more involved with the engine and I got to see much more about exactly what you need um, to make the animations work not only in Maya, export, but also in engine when you go in. That experience really uh, helped me out to kind of build a foundation of how much there is to learn technically as an animator about an engine. I got to the conclusion after many years that unless you know what an engine does and unless you know how an animator uses an engine, you're pretty much working blind when it comes to knowing what the uh, games industry does um, or an animator does within the games industry because it goes hand in hand. You have to be in Maya, animating, doing your stuff, exporting your animations, but you also know, have to know what goes on behind the scenes in that engine in order for you to get the most bang for the buck. I've used quite a few engines throughout the years and um, I started with the engine that is now defunct called the Euro engine <laughs> um, and then I moved on to the Cry engine, Frostbite, um, and all of those engines have different things that are really good and really bad about each other, right? Like I mentioned before. So uh, the one that is uh, I prefer as an animator out of all the engines that I've used and the one that is easy to easier to use and you can actually get most more bang for your buck faster as an animator is Unreal. So most of the stuff that I'm gonna tell you next about the details of an engine are gonna be based off Unreal because that's the engine that is most widely available out there and it's the engine that you most likely use um, because it's the engine that most studios out there are using. So uh, the more you know about the engine, the more you know how it works and what it can do for you as an animator, the better your animations will be. So after getting to all those conclusions and after actually having suffered in the beginning about not knowing what the engine was, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there are suffering from the same, uh, this is why I wanted to create this episode for all of you animators out there to give you a lowdown of what an engine is from an animator's perspective so you at least know what to expect when you get into the industry and so you can make the most of your animations depending on the engine that you're working in.
So what is an engine? So you can think of an engine, of a game engine, as the brains behind the game. And it's almost in a literal sense because there's so many things being pumped into the engine and so many calculations that have to happen in real time that genuinely the engine is doing a lot of the heavy lifting whenever you're actually playing a game. It's doing all the heavy lifting really whenever you're playing the game. So think about the engine as a brain and then it's being pumped with information. That brain then gets condensed into a disk or hard drive somewhere and then when you load that game and you play that game that game is basically that brain being like this is how my developers imagine the game and it just pews out stuff animations and graphics and effects and all runtime and AI and all these different things and this is the final game that you have in your consoles in your PCs that is how you should see an engine so that's the most basic way that you can see an engine just so you understand from a developer perspective from our perspective engines are a tool for you to be able to make a game it doesn't matter if you're a coder if you're an artist if you're an animator um, it's basically just a tool and you have to know where buttons are for you to be able to be able to create the things that you want to create. Now, uh, different engines have different buttons and some engines are more capable than others at doing different things, right? Some are really, really good graphically. Some others are very uh, good at being easy to use um, and so on and so forth. Like if you can take at uh, every single feature of an engine, doesn't matter if it's AI or level structure or textures, every single engine is, is slightly better, slightly worse than the other. But all engines kind of have similar features at this point. We got to a point now that like the games industry is mature enough to actually be able to be in a place that most engines do the same thing. You just have to find where the buttons are for you to be able to do what you want to do as a developer. So going off this, I want to talk about ease of use because ease of use is incredibly important for us artists uh, in an engine because we are not so technically, technically driven. So if you actually kind of put a coder in any engine, they'll probably just start kind of like taking the furniture out, trying to find how this thing work, how is it coded, how can I actually push my code here and there, and there in order to actually kind of make things better. So code is basically the infrastructure of the whole engine and is the most important thing for a game to run. Now, that layer is obviously for a coder, it's really good and they can actually go into any engine and just like dissect it and know exactly what's good what's bad and what needs to be better now from an artist's perspective for us we kind of expect that layer to be done so we can go on top of that layer and start putting our assets within that world doesn't matter if it's animations or if it's level art or whatever it is we just have to actually put things on top of that engine and push that engine to the max to see how much juice can it give you this is why ease of use in an engine is so important for us artists because the easier it is for an engine to be used the more time the artist can spend creating art to put within the engine. If the engine is very complex, and I have used quite a few engines that are very complex, that means they spend a lot of time in engine trying to debug or trying to make it work some way, somehow, and you spend most of your time debugging things and actually kind of trying to make them work instead of creating things that that's where you should be most of your time. And that's the difference uh, between an engine that is easy to use and one that is very complex. Now, what exactly do you do as an animator in an engine on a daily basis? Everything that I'm gonna say next is gonna be oversimplified because you do so much more than this as an animator. So um, the first thing, the most basic thing that you can do in an engine is actually import animations into engine. So after you finish your animation in Maya, you go do a beautiful animation, whatever you decide to do, you have an export in Maya button, normally it's in-house, that you actually have an export tool that actually exports things in the right way from Maya, and then it gives you a file that spits out, normally a FBX file, and that FBX file then actually gets consumed by the game. Before you actually kind of import it into Engine, for example, Unreal, you have to select a few options and it depends on the game that you're working on, but you have to be very careful the very few times that you do it, um, the very first times that you do it, 
you need to be very careful on how you do it because you have to select a certain amount of options like what kind of skeleton um, what kind of features does your game have uh, or your animation have and where do you want to put it exactly right so is it upper body animation or does it affect one arm only is it a full body animation um, so there's quite a few options that you have to take and normally when you have a little bit of experience you know exactly where each animation goes and where what which kind of options do you have to take before you import an animation into engine after you import it then you go about your business of actually checking if the animation is correct if it's playing correctly if you have to go back to Maya and you have to reauthor the animation once again to make sure that it works well so that is normally step number one you have to import animations into engine make sure that you select your settings correctly get the animation in engine see it in engine see if everything is well and if you export it correctly and if it's good then you can go into the next step so step number two is actually setting up animation states so now you have your animation imported you can see your animation in engine it's just the one animation right so normally when you are actually working in any game um, if you come in halfway through or towards the end of the project these animation states are going to be set for you if you're just in the beginning maybe you're going to have to set them yourself so what animation states are is basically getting a character from one state to the other hence why animation states so the character can be idling within the idle you have different animations so the character can be idling still or it can actually be like be like idling and moving away or it can actually be picking their nose <laughs> can be moving off the spot slightly and coming back to the spot so even the idol has different states and then the character at some point you press the controller and the character needs to move off the idol to a run or to a walk or to a jump so this is what the states mean like i was in a state of idling and then i'm gonna go into a state of walking or running or jumping or whatever is next right and that's basically character states you need to set up the states almost like a branch almost like a tree right and those animations you have to drop them in the different states so they can actually Actually go between states correctly and they can flow really nicely now the bigger the game the bigger the animation states and normally in a triple-a game that is huge normally you end up with an incredibly complex animation state machine that does all kinds of stuff and there's different sections for different things and it becomes really complex but on its most basic um, explanation or, or, or view animation states is basically how you get a character from one state to the other after you have a lot of animations so for example if you have blend spaces like a uh, walk left walk right walk back walk forward that's just one state but you have to put a lot of animations in the, that one state with a blend space to make sure that the character moves from one side to the other correctly um, i'll explain more in detail these things in future videos but just know that this is important and this is definitely something that you actually need to actually consider when you import new animations and the third thing that you do the most as well, um, it's normally checking blueprints. That's what's, what they call it in Unreal, but generically animation code. Um, so this is basically like you have the animations imported, step one, step two, you have your animation states, the character can go from one state to the other. But now you have to actually have, uh, have to tell the engine what signal do they have to listen to in order to actually trigger certain things, right? So you have to tell the engine, for example, engine there's a controller here in the controller whenever you press button x the character needs to jump and then the engine knows that going to this animation state pick up this specific animation and do it right so that is the animation code that is underlying everything that is kind of looking at what is the player doing with the controller to pick the right animation state at any point this also works for example if the character all of a sudden needs to die or is gonna is gonna be hit by something the engine just goes the character is being hit by something therefore play this other animation that is blueprints that is animation code that is what's the underlying the thing that connects animations and engine that is the ultimate thing that actually kind of connects everything all the hard work that you've been doing in order to get your animations to look good in engine <laughs> Explaining engines is incredibly difficult. Uh, I've been with my fiance for about 10 years now and I've been trying to explain to her in the most basic way what an engine does. 
and as intelligent as she is, she's incredibly intelligent, she still doesn't get it fully because uh, when you play a game and when you explain what an engine does, it's almost like explaining wind, right? Like you don't see it. So what does it do exactly? You can see the effect of an engine, but you don't really see the engine itself, right? Um, so it sounds very much, when people think engines, they think car engines, right? I can see things moving, I can see things like making noise, therefore I know that it's moving the car some way, somehow, even if you don't understand what a car engine does. But in games, there's no one thing that you can point to and say, this is the engine. It's almost like a cloud of different ideas coming together to put a game together, right? So that's why it's so complicated to explain what an engine does or what it is. Um, but I hope this, at least from an animation perspective, showcase to you uh, what kind of things do you have to deal with as an animator when you have to deal with an engine. Because um, there's quite a few things outside of this that you have to deal with, but most of the stuff that you have to deal with normally is within those three like realms, right? You use either like because you didn't import an animation correctly or you need to tweak some things, or it's because an animation state is not quite set up correctly or needs to be refined a little bit better, or ultimately, and the one that actually happens the most, is because code is not really set up correctly or needs to be set up in order to take leverage of your animations and make them better. So those are the three realms that normally animators live within uh, in games. And I hope this kind of highlights it and kind of like gives you some kind of understanding of what's going on behind the scenes. So that's all I had for you guys this week. Please leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you think about engines. Do you know a lot about engines? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of the stuff that I'm trying to actually kind of replicate. Do you already work in the industry? How do you find engines? What's your favorite engine? Some of the stuff that we can talk about in this uh, comment section of this video this week. Love to chat with you guys. I've been getting comments about, do you answer questions in the comments? And I do, I really do. And I really like to talk to you guys, answer any questions that you have. So feel free to drop questions down below about any of the stuff that I just mentioned in this video or anything else for that matter. So have a great rest of the week. Speak to you guys next week. Stay well, stay safe. Peace.